become known for yourself at home or Bronco directors. That means for the maintenance purpose, the investigation is peak flow rate diary. of asthma step one okay step one is inhaled saba saba means short acting beta 2 agonist that means inhale salbutamol if asthma is not controlled a patient uses inhale salbutamol greater than three doses per week then we will consider or we will step go to step two what is step 2? Inhale Sava plus inhale corticosteroids. We can name is that inhale beclomethasone. The third step is important. Inhale Sava plus inhale corticosteroids. Uh, that means first two steps plus LTRA antagonist, leukotrin receptor antagonist. That is Montelukast. Step 4, Saba plus inhale corticosteroids plus this this laba uh, please uh, correct it it is not aba it is laba long acting beta 2 agonist plus leukotriene receptors uh, there is a change between two guidelines in the uk one is nice guideline and another is bts guideline according to the nice guideline the third step is this inhale saba plus inhale corticosteroid that means uh, combination of step 2 plus leukotriene antagonist but if mentioned in the same that according to the BTS management what will be the exact management then your answer will be LABA that means inhale SABA plus inhale corticosteroids no leukotriene antagonist that will be LABA so hey, only step 3 Saba plus corticosteroid plus LTRA. Saba lava ki? Short acting. Saba, LTRA and corticosteroid. This is step 3 according to NICE guideline. Okay? But same thing, step 3 according to BTS guideline, it is Saba plus same corticosteroid A that means combination of step 2 plus LABA exactly so if LTRA that means Montelukast then it is NICE guideline if LABA then it is BTS guideline so careful about this what has been asked in your stay okay whether it is NICE guideline or BTS guideline maximum time NICE guideline is preferred Maximum time they follow nice guideline, but if they include this word BTS, then you will just change it. Saba Laba steroid. Laba. Next step five is Saba Laba. Same thing. Step four just plus increased dose of corticosteroid. Okay. So if shortly we do this, then this is the management. First thing is Saba. Second thing is Saba plus corticosteroid. Third thing is Saba steroid plus LTRA. Fourth thing is Saba steroid Laba LTRA. Okay. If still patient have uh, asthma or uh, this doesn't help relief to the patient, then we will just simply increase the dose of the corticosteroid. Okay. This is number one. At first, we will increase the dose of inhaled corticosteroid. Or we can do this like trial of a new drug like theophylline or we can seek professional advice. But before going to these two, at first we advise this, the increased dose of inhaled corticosteroid. Okay? We can do any of the three. But usually we do the first one, further increase of the dose of the inhaled corticosteroid. These are the long term management of asthma. Uh, in this stem, you will have to keep your eye that what does the stem has been asked you? Is it long term management? Is it acute exacerbation of asthma in adult? What is the age? Is it acute exacerbation of asthma in pediatrics? 
और इसी एक्यूट एक्सरसाइजेशन ऑफ सीओपीडी और लॉन्ग टर्म मैनेजमेंट ऑफ सीओपीडी और एक्सरसाइज इन ड्यूस एस्मा बिकॉज़ ईच ऑफ द डायग्नोसिस द ट्रीटमेंट विल बी डिफरेंट सो इट इज योर होम टास्क to like shortly write the treatment in one or two page to compare this treatment and so that you can read it before the exam because you will definitely 100% you will get one question from this acute uh, exacerbation of uh, as my adult or pediatrics acute exacerbation of uh, copd and exercise induced asthma or long term management of asthma or copd you will definitely 100% it is an open question you will get one question from this management okay and you will get confused in the exam like whenever you try to answer the uh, or choose the options uh, you will feel everything is right because each options you have read it so each options will come confuse you so it is very important and make a note for yourself at home it will definitely help you in the exam and it is very important now how we will diagnose asthma or copd okay uh, i will tell this uh, at a glance it will help you to memorize in case of asthma whether the diagnosis is asthma or whether page number is 24 whether it is asthma or whether it is copd the diagnosis is uh, we do for this spirometry okay we do the spirometry after spirometry what do we see in spirometry we see two things fev1 and fvc okay force expiratory volume in one second or first second or force vital capacity you just simply remember this you don't uh, need to memorize the pathophysiology or mechanism or anything else you just need to remember this one word in case of asthma and copd this ratio is less than 70% it will be always less than 70% or 0.7 after giving bronchodilator or post bronchodilation in case of asthma it will improve that means this uh, 0.7 will be increase okay but in case of copd it will still remain less than 0.7 this is the basic or main difference between asthma and copd in your exam if you do the spirometry in case of asthma fpv1 by fbc this ratio will be always less than 70% in case of both like asthma and copd but after giving the bronchodilator asthma that is the irreversible um, dilatation of the airways or irreversible uh, sorry reversible um, changes of the airways but in case of copd it is the irreversible so this uh, ratio will be remain same so if after giving bronchodilation it is less than 0.7 it is copd diagnosed if it is improved then it is asthma it will just come in your exam nothing else will come just this and for pulmonary fibrosis this ratio will be greater than 70% okay that is the restrictive disease okay another thing you have to know that is this to help establish the diagnosis of asthma or copd whatever this is diagnostic investigation is spirometry but for the uh, patient compliance or to determine the appropriate time for this use of medication or bronchodilators that means for the maintenance purpose the investigation is peak flow rate diary okay they will give you a, a peak flow rate chart uh, and diary and they ask the patient to maintain this diary and uh, whenever the patient will come again to the gp according to see the diary the measurement they will just adjust the doses okay so for the establishment of the disease this is spirometry for the maintenance purpose peak flow rate diary that's it mm -hmm.